Dark Productions 500, or Dark Productions 00 says, well, what's the difference between two video cards, both are the same, but one is running at a faster rate? For example, a 512 megabyte video card is running at 600 megahertz, while the other one's running at 1 gigahertz. Does it really help with performance? Does it really help with performance and handling more polygons? Well, the polygons are just, it depends on the type of rendering you're doing, okay? Um, but what you're talking about is an overclock processor or overclock graphics um, processor on your graphics card or GPU. What basically you have is on your stock unit, typically a lot of the graphics cards are shipped from the manufacturer to other vendors at a basic frequency. And that frequency has a core frequency and it has a memory frequency. Okay, a lot of the software packages that come with graphics cards now have the capability of overclocking the graphics card, uh, especially with the Radeon. It's got the ATI utility that you can down the tuner, and you can actually go in and actually tweak and optimize and overclock. They call it overcharge, I believe, uh, and it lets you go into and boost up the frequency of both the processor and both the memory, and this allows for more throughput or bandwidth to occur on your pre graphics processing. Just because the processor is running at 1,000 hertz doesn't mean you're going to get a huge performance increase unless your memory bandwidth is also increased. And typically when people go into overclock their graphics card, they do a lit, they do, it's like a little taper. This is like an overclocking recommendation for graphics cards. You taper your graphics card up slowly, right? So you start at your base frequency that it's rated at, and uh, the manufacturer usually will specify what that is. And if you go online, what I like to do before I overclock, because I don't want to damage my hardware, by the way, and you can do that if you overclock too much and you push it too hard and it doesn't have proper cooling, uh, I like to go on and see what other people have kind of gotten their clock speeds at for the memory and processor. And then I kind of just keep slowly tapering mine up, and then you do a reboot and you run it. You run it through the 3D Mark benchmark, which is free, and then you see how it performs, and then if it runs good, doesn't lock up, then you can go in and bump it up a little more, and you keep bumping it up a little bit after a little bit until you kind of find where that lockup point is. Uh, and then you can kind of taper it back. Uh, that was that was the old-fashioned way and how us old-school people kind of do it, and it's, I still think that's the best method. A lot of these newer tools will have, like, the built-in overclocker, so they'll actually go in and keep doing that for you, so it'll reboot the machine a couple times. That's good, but usually they play it really safe because obviously they don't want to damage your hardware. So usually you can't get the most out of it. Now with overclocking, I do want to throw this out there as a disclaimer. You want to make sure, first of all, that you're, you're not overclocking it without proper cooling. So you want to make sure your GPU heat, the temperature rating, which you should be getting the feedback from your temperature on your GPU from your graphics card processor software, your graphics card software, you want to make sure that GPU is running under full load when you're playing a game at the proper temperature for that particular GPU. And that really should make sure you're running fine as far as temperatures are concerned. And as always, as you know, when you're buying a GPU or a graphics card, like you said, some of them have 1,000 hertz. That's because the manufacturer of the card overclocked it before they shipped it to you. And they stuck a, oh, excuse me, they stuck a huger fan, hu huger, <laughs> They stuck a bigger fan on the graphics card before they shipped it to you because they basically did all their benchmarking and testing on the overclock before you bought it. So you can basically buy pre-overclocked cards now. And that's what you're probably seeing. You're like, what's the difference between these two? One of them probably has a bigger fan or better cooling or something like that. Uh, but that's an excellent question. Uh, I don't get a lot of graphics card questions on the show anymore. So good stuff. Thank you. Thank you for that excellent question, Dark Productions. Uh, but every graphics card manufacturer has these overclocking tools now because they didn't want... They were tired of third parties doing the overclocking tools and then people damaging their graphics card. So they started packaging the overclocking tools with the, uh, the driver software if you get the full Catalyst suite and things like that. So, good question.